And so the story of the resurrection, there's so much I can say, but I, I want to just say this, that you have to understand what he did for you. If the king is not alive, we have no hope. If the king didn't rose from the grave, we are eternally condemned. But the king did raise. You see, the Pharisees were conspiring. Demons were thinking that they are busy thriving. But the king of kings was busy rising and so when i when i speak about him this morning you have to understand what he did for you at the age of 30 he comes onto the scene he gets baptized by his cousin his cousin's name is john the baptist the bible says god the father gets so excited when his son gets onto the scene and at that moment when his son gets onto the scene the bible says the heavens split open and jesus the the, the father speaks for his identity he says this is my begotten son, my only begotten son in whom I am well pleased. Then the Bible says the devil had no clue where Jesus was at until the father spoke. You have to understand when the father speaks, it gives you identity and it also gives you destiny. Father speaks, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Next guy on the scene is the devil and he says, if you are the son of God, greatest question of who you will ever do, what you will ever do in your lifetime. Who are you and what do you believe? See, that's the question of the ages. Who are you and what do you believe? Who are you truly? We are identified not by what have happened to me. We are identified about what can happen through me by him that I, I have entrusted my soul to so here comes a young man onto the scene he lives in complete obedience to the father his name is Jesus the Christ and when we say Jesus the Christ Jesus the Christ is not just a name it's a title because he should have been Jesus by Joseph Jesus the son of Joseph no he wasn't he was Jesus the Christ that's why when they placed him next to Barabbas, the people got confused because Barabbas, the son of Abba, son of the father versus son of God. Suddenly the people got confused because they didn't know who he was. And so he was praying in the, in the garden of Gethsemane in John chapter number 18. And he said, Father, if this cup of suffering can let me pass, let it be so, but not my will be done, yours be done. And the Son of Man took the full cup of suffering upon him and he lived his life in three and a half years in complete obedience to the Father. Jesus, the man, Christ, God. There's two natures to Jesus, his humanity and his divinity. You have to understand, Jesus needed to empty himself of his divinity so that he can take on his humanity and he needed to die as a man because it was a man that messed it up. Adam messed it up. Jesus needed to restore it. So Jesus needed to come as a man. And as a man, he came. As a man, he knew all our limitations. As a man, he knew all our sins, all our, well, not all of our sins. He knew all of our temptations. He, know, he knew how it felt to be cold. He knew how it felt to be betrayed. He knew how it felt to be lonely. He knew how it felt to, to be cast to the side. He knew all of these things, yet he was without sin. He was, yet he was without sin. And so in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 4 to 54, you find the scripture where it says, the, when the perishable has clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come through, death has been swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But, but, you have to take note of the buts in your Bible. But God, therefore, but thanks be to God, he gives, he gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say it again. But thanks be to God. Save me. Thank you, Jesus. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the power of death is sin. Sin was present because God made all things. Nothing has ever been made that God did not make. God made death. And so Christians today should not fear death because death was something that was made. But death had no power if sin was not present. Come on, let's get into this just for a moment. Death had no power if sin was not present. So death was present, present, but it had no power because sin was not present. But then when Adam sinned, death got empowered. The power of sin is death, right? So we needed a solution because now sin is present upon the earth because Adam sinned against the word of the Lord. And because Adam sinned against the word of the Lord, death was empowered. And so we needed a solution for both death and sin. And so we needed a man to come upon the scene that is not born out of human nature, but out of a God nature. But of all the limitations and all the temptations and all the things that we face, he needed to be clothed with. 
So the greatest act of humility of God the Father was this, to send the Son and for the Son to be clothed in the, the limitations of man. And so the Son being clothed in the limitations of man, He needed to live a life completely without sin. If He sinned once, death would again have power because the power of death is sin. Listen, many of you sit here this morning in our cultures today, we celebrate death very much. Listen, oh, death has no sting. Oh, death, where is your victory? Paul the Apostle mocks death, actually. He says, death, where are your sting? Where is your victory? In other words, Paul the Apostle found out that there's a power greater than death, that there's a power greater than the power of sin and death. And so Jesus lives out his life for three and a half years in complete submission, obedience, servanthood and humility to the Father.